So, hello, come back to another episode of Self Development with Tactics Podcast. As you can see in the background, some sort of. We are once again going through Seth's blog because he's a great thinker and I believe that he shares a lot of things that a lot of people, me included by the way, need to hear and need to know about and need to think about. Um, which is amazing, you know, to have access to those things, you know, that can open worlds for one and a completely different view on whatever it might be. It is amazing. So the first one, indispensable or irreplaceable. There are a thousand other high schools, high schools and each one has a vice principal and who isn't you? No, you're not irreplaceable. No one is. Not really. But if we work at it, we might become indispensable. The linchpin, someone who would be missed if they were gone. There's a book called Linchpin. Um, in the end, as, as far as I remember, and also um, it would make sense according to the text and you know what role it plays in a text, a linchpin is someone that you cannot, as he says, dispense or you cannot exchange this person for somebody else because this person is so crucial for the organization for this society for this community for this whatever it might be about that you cannot do anything about it you know you have to have this person and becoming such a person and being such a person is what the book is i would say partly also about or maybe mostly about um and this is amazing if you think about it, you know, being a person that is needed in a company that could be hiring everyone, you know, but you are such a personality and you have this set of skills and this set of also soft skills, I would say, that just makes you um, not changeable, I guess. Absolute and relative. It doesn't matter that it is not the Super Bowl or the World Cup. For this 12-year-old, tomorrow's game is the big game, the biggest ever, and the emotional stakes are just as high. It doesn't matter that this illness isn't going to be life or death in the next few days. For this patient, it feels that way. Most of what we encounter is driven by emotions, and our emotions are always relative. When we are shopping for a car or an avocado, we are buying the way it makes us feel, and not how it would make someone else feel. That is really the case. And this might just really underline why it is important to know the people that are buying your product. If you can make them feel this way, the certain way they want to feel after buying it or buying something or buying this item um, or this, this category of items, you know what I mean? Um, this might be a really great way or this probably is a really great way to sell more and also make a better product for those people because we cannot make products for everyone just doesn't work it's just not how things are um just period in Bhutan, they dream of rainbows in countries throughout the world even in countries where there are no snakes the most common dream is on is one based on our, it must be, genetic fear of snakes. But in Bhutan, the daydream of rainbows. The dreams might be consistent, but the way we talk about them clearly isn't. Perhaps the dreams we remember and talk about have something to do with culture. Conversations are contagious. The most common dream in every country. This is a picture. Let's have a look. The human body, animals of nature, family, love and relationships, money and object, death and then there is no data. Shoes, money and objects. In the very southern part of Africa, there we have a lot of money. Um, there we have Europe. North America is all about love and relationships apparently. And also, well no, it's, I'm sorry, the human body. Teeth falling out. <laughs> teeth falling out and in Mexico we're having X relationship that's interesting South America we're having a lot of snakes and spiders and in Europe there are in eastern parts we have snakes and uh, the sea but also teeth falling out in the very northern part and pregnancy in Germany 
I would assume also um, Switzerland and Italy. Even though in the very south part we are having snakes again, or have we? And in Austria there are also a lot of snake dreams apparently. We are all human, but that doesn't mean we all dream about the same thing. When we hit the hay, we wanted to find out the most common dream in every country. We used something to analyze Google search volumes uh, for different dream types. The most Google dream in the world is about snakes, says this little tiny text that I barely can read in the very part. Waiting for a miracle. Every year, tens of thousands of people get into a famous college for their choice, or of their choice. It is not unlike that someone will get in. It is simply not certain that you will. But someone will, so getting isn't a miracle. It is simply a long shot. If you add a pound a day to the leg press machine at the gym, it is possible to have the ability to press 250 pounds within a year. It is difficult and grueling, but not a long shot. Neither of these outcomes requires a miracle. The first might have low odds since the second requires persistence. But a miracle is something that's never happened before and is not to be counted on. Yes, um, everything could work and uh, we might be able to create better odds for ourselves or just have the persistency um, to do something else. Might also have something to do with this college, you know, when it is about your SAT or your A-levels or whatever it might be to get into this particular college um, or university or whatever. Um, you can do something about that, you know, it is nothing like you cannot do anything about it. So many choices, so many sorts of metrics, critics and measures. Perhaps it makes sense to count things where the counting tells us how to do better next time. And to count things that let us know how much risk we can take next time, or to calibrate our judgment about the market. But it makes no sense at all to count things over which we have no control and which teach us nothing about the future. Counting our luck, good or bad, doesn't make us luckier. And that's a very interesting thought, and there is a bit more to that, but yeah. Think about the miracle. Think about what to count, what to to focus on. And with that being said, I'm hopefully going to see you the next time, so bye-bye.